Um, the other kind of thing I want to talk about is environments. Um, oh, forget that. Um, environments. Um, this is the sort of the depressing slide of the class about all the interesting stuff we're not going to do. Um, if you think of AI as about building an agent, then agents can exist in lots of different environments. Right? So the, these are the different sort of dimensions of an environment, the different characteristics of it. So that one is the observability of the environment. Can I see what's going on? Although you're playing poker, like there's a lot of stuff going on that you can't see that you really wish you knew, that like plays into what you, the correct action is to do. Um, so that's called a uh, partially observable situation, poker, because you can see your own cards. Um, for the assignments that we're going to do, you basically are going to get to see the entire state of the world. So that's the easiest case to deal with. Um, great idea for a final project is to do this. This is the hardest kind. This is where you can't see a blooming thing. Anyone think of a problem where you have to select actions, but the state of the world is hidden from you? <laughs> yeah, so, so, yep, that's true, that's true. Um, typically, you have some information there, like, I know I'm in my bed, <laughs> something like that, but so what you're saying is you unless you had a really good time that previous night, you really don't know where you are, it's just it's very dark. <laughs> you're, talk you're talking about the Mars rover is on Mars, and it senses our state. That's, that's the, actually the example I had in mind, exactly. NASA cares about that problem a lot. Um, planning with completely hidden state. Um, so uh, there's some guy whose job it is to design, it's called the safing sequence for the spacecraft. Like when something goes wrong, this is what we do. And we don't, we have no idea what the state of the spacecraft is. We don't trust our sensors. Just shut me down, put me in a safe state. So there's some guy that like designs that sequence that it goes into when everything is going wrong, and they're like, get the safe scap in a safe, you know, point the antenna back to Earth, close all the instruments, just hang out, wait for further instructions, send out a, you know, little tune every half hour. Um, you know, there's some guy that has to design that. So he's making a plan where you have no idea what state you're in, but yet you have to reach this certain safe configuration. Right, so that it's called planning with hidden state or conformant planning. Um, it's a really cool problem. I mean, what a neat job. Like, you wouldn't want to screw that one up. <laughs> uh, really like have a program do that for you, wouldn't you? <laughs> Find the best sequence of actions to save the spacecraft. Um, so that's a, the observability of the environment. That's the sort of most important uh, feature of it. The other is, um, the second most important would be the, the uh, actions. When you take an action, do you know what happens? So like you're playing chess, it's a deterministic game. You make a move, you, you know your, what move you just made. Like there's only one, out, like the board position changes. Like your rook moves to there. Yes. You don't know what the opponent's going to do, but your moves, your actions are deterministic. Um, if you're driving a robot, it's non-deterministic. You would not believe how difficult it is to go from a, a flat floor, hard floor like this linoleum onto carpet because there's, there's some little junction between them. And most robots use wheels, and wheels love to get stuck <laughs> on these little bumps in between the carpet and the linoleum. So you tell the robot go forward, and the wheels turn. And sometimes the robot goes forward, and sometimes one of the wheels gets stuck, and the robot goes like this, right? And you said go forward, right? There was, so there's a certain chance the robot went forward, and there's some small chance that it turned 90 degrees to the right. That's called a stochastic action. It's got some random element in it. Um, so that's the, where the world is stochastic. You take an action. You have influence over what happens, but you do not totally control what happens. There's some element of randomness that goes into it. So we're going to talk about that a lot um, later in the class. So we're going to cover both deterministic and stochastic. We are not going to do strategic environments, which is games. So like I make a move, then he makes a move. So I may want to change what I do according to what I think he was going to do in response to my move. 
We, well, we're cover, we'll cover basic game search, but um, we're not going to get into deep stuff there like Nash equilibria and stuff. Um, we're not going to do that in this class. Um, so those are the most important things. There are other things too like um, uh, is time passed while I think? You know, like in, in most games, like the board does not change while you think about what your next move is going to be. Um, sometimes, like if you're flying a helicopter, like things can change while you are thinking. So it's very important to think quickly. Uh, so that different problems vary according to uh, how, what happens with time. There are also um, questions about whether the state is discrete or continuous. So if I'm controlling an oil refinery, um, that's, a, that's a very hot problem nowadays. Um, you know, if you're optimizing the, the production of fuel, for example, um, which is very important to get right, um, a lot of the state information about what's the state of the world are continuous real valued numbers. Like, oh, the pressure is 32.6. Um, the temperature in this vessel is 29.7. Um, in chess or um, other simple problems like that, the world is very discrete. Like, this piece is in that position. This piece is in that position. There's no like ranges, it's like here or there. You have discrete choices. So the, the state space of the world is discrete. Um, often the actions are then also discrete, like you can put this there. Um, whereas if you're doing driving or something like that, usually your actions are real valued, like you know, turn the steering wheel 27.5 degrees. That's a continuous action space. Um, so usually, Problems where the state is continuous also have continuous actions and often continuous time. Um, oftentimes, discrete problems with discrete state have discrete actions and discrete time, but it doesn't always match up like that. So that's important to know. We'll mostly be looking at complete, deterministic, static, discrete problems for a single agent. That's mostly what we're going to do in this class. Um, if you want to do something else for a final project, like a multi-agent system, um, that's great. That's terrific. Um, so, questions about environments? People understand the terminology well squared away? Okay. Anyone, th anyone think of anything that's not covered by these, or what we have here? If I'm playing Jeopardy, what do we have? Let's see, well, I guess there are a lot of different pro parts of the Jeopardy problem. Uh, one is like, aren't there different categories of questions you can choose? Like, you know, I want like 15th century novels for $2,700. Um, so that's a, something where you have um, hidden information. Like you don't know what the questions are that you're choosing, the, you know, the, the set of questions, uh, the different sets that you're choosing from, you don't know what they contain. That's true, yeah, good point. Yep, so you do have some information uh, that gives you a sense of what might be there. Yeah, good point. So that's partial information. Um, <sighs> that's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's kind of halfway. I don't know that either of those is really the best word for it. it certainly time plays a big role. It's not like the question is changing though, so the question, is, the question is static, but the clock is definitely ticking. So you want to be time aware. Yeah, good, good point. I'm not sure that that's really well covered either. If this were a total, if this were an exam situation, I would probably say, well, if it were an exam, I would write out a big long answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. Um, I'd say this has elements of static because the problem isn't changing and dynamic because the clock is ticking. Uh, maybe I'd call it dynamic. Yeah, that's true. So, so the the answer. Answer yeah, are you allowed whatever much time you want to say which category? Uh, no, I don't think you're allowed in the class that much. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's like you have a set time for that, but for the other one, you want it to be clear. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's hard. That's that sounds very hard. Um, yeah. So you completely observe the question, um, and then time is time is going. Um, there are other agents involved in a competitive situation. When you have a multi-agent system, you can have it either where 
we're all optimizing the same thing together or competitive, like we're each optimizing our own thing and they might not match up. <laughs> you might be optimizing something that's contrary to what I'm optimizing. Um, your utility function and my utility function might be different. Um, so that's a comp called a competitive situation. Um, yeah, so the question answering definitely is competitive because you have the, you know, the longer you wait, the more likely it is someone else is going to buzz in. So my understanding is the way though, everybody see the Watson system that competed on Jeopardy? Uh, my understanding is they like tried to predict whether they were going to get the question right and then buzzed while they were still formu finishing formulating the answer. Um, so they had a predictor that predicted how well their system would do uh, to determine how fast to buzz. Um, and apparently people worked the same way. So that's kind of cool. Like most of the, of the human Jeopardy players like can get every question uh, if you give them enough time. It's just a question of how fast they are confident enough to buzz. Uh, okay. Any other questions about this? Okay. Uh, oh, are we ready to move on? I guess we're ready. Okay. We're gonna, so that is the first topic, was to talk about agents and environments. Um, so now we have basic ground rules. Like, and so we're going to start off by talking about how to do planning and problem solving for a single agent in a fully observable world with deterministic actions. Okay, so it's the, the good place to start. Then you can build up from there if we want to.